Okay, welcome to part two of our um, of our curves tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at um, more things to do with curves. We looked at how to create curves, how to um, how to turn them into certain shapes, how to get these handles and twist them around. At the very very end of the lesson lesson of the tutorial, um, the first part of this curve tutorial, we've gone through. We've created the curve. This is a slightly different one here because I accidentally closed it along without saving it. We went through and we um, we created a an extrude. We we extruded it outwards, and um, we even got, went through and, and did some beveling to it. Okay, then we went through into object mode, press Alt C, and we converted that mesh, sorry that curve into a mesh, which basically means when we're going to edit mode again, pressing the Tab key, we now have this um, this object is instead of being curves with handles has been turned into an object, a mesh, that has got faces and edges and vertices and all that stuff there. But it's not your normal... Oh, let me show you something. G for grab. This thing here, it's, um, it's disconnected from each other. This is actually... If I go through and press Control L, which means um, select everything that's linked to it, you'll see, if I press G for grab, you'll see that the edges there are actually a different object to the faces. Okay, what I mean by edges and faces is the edge of this this logo is different from the top and the bottom faces of the logo. Okay, we can fix that. We can go through. I'm just going to put it into um, into vertex vertex mode because if you look in here, we can see that Chief Grab there is more than one vertex in there. Okay, let's zoom in. Yeah, keep a grab. You see, two little points occupying the same spot. We can fix that. You go through to A to select all. There's one A, unselects, and then A selects. We go through and we go remove doubles. And what happens is every single one of those double points in the same spot, let's go through and click now, you'll see now they've been m merged, put together into one single point, one single vertex. Which means now if I click anything and go Control L, the entire thing gets selected because everything now is linked together. Right. Now, let's say we wanted to go through and smooth this object. There is issues, and I'll show you why. If we go through now and hit um, the Spanner Modifiers, we go through and add the subdivision surface, which we normally would do. It looks absolutely terrible. Okay, it's because triangles do not smooth down well. Okay, see the, the side bits which were um, rectangles, they are smoothing down just fine. But the, um, the front bits which are all triangles, they look absolutely awful. Even if I went through and increased the, uh, the level of smoothness, it still looks shocking. Even if I went through and made it all smooth shading, it still looks awful. There's nothing I can do to fix it. That is why it is very, very vitally important. I'm going to control Z to undo until I get it back into. Um, no, not there yet. Get it back into. Um, a curve. Ah, here we go. Is that it? Nope. Back even further. Oh, that must be a curve now. Yes, back into the curve. If I want to do any smoothing to my curve, I've got to go through and do it before I convert it into a mesh. Have a look here. I extrude it out. That's all great. Notice the smoothing along here. As we saw in the previous one, I can increase or decrease the amount of smoothing that's happening. Okay, so if I want it really smooth, I just whip it all the way up like that. 29, just some random number. If I want the edges around here smooth, then I go bevel and I increase the depth of the beveling. Okay, and then if I want to smooth that bevel itself, I can increase the resolution of the bevel. Now, when I go into object mode, press Alt C, turn it from a mesh into a from curve from a mesh, and I go into edit mode. You'll see now there's a lot more faces and vertices and all that stuff there. I still need to go through and go and select them all. Remove the doubles. And then when I get out again, you'll see it's, it's nice and smooth. And, um, and that's great. So in other words, you've got to do the smoothing before you go and convert it into a mesh. 
that's the embedding about curves. Okay, cool. That's part one of curves. Part two. Okay, there's another thing curves can do. So very good. I'm going to object here, deleting it, gone. Uh, I'm going through and going to look from top view. Oh look, there's our panel thing that's all there. Let's just quickly get rid of that. You can find us down here in this background images. I'll just click, gone. Press N again to bring that panel back in. I'm going to go through and I'm going to insert two curves. Now, I'm just making sure that um that my uh, my 3D cursor is just in the center. It just helps when you're, you're inserting stuff. Um, you can make sure it's exactly there, but it's going into this 3D cursor location. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, and now it should be right on the zero mark. Brilliant. Shift, middle mouse button, click, and you can drag it around so it's in the middle. I'm going to go Shift A. I'm going to add two different curves. I'm going to actually let's do um, let's do path first. We're going to make a circle. Okay, the circle here is a curve. If you go in, you'll see it's made up of these um, these lines. It's the exact same as before, and you'll see that I can go through and grab its handles and, and move them around if I want to do. All good. Now, I'm going to Shift A. Notice I jump back into object mode by pressing the Tab key. Shift A. I'm going to go through and add a little mesh in there. Uh, let's say a, a cube. Okay, I'm going to get that, scale it down so it's nice and small. What? are you doing? You may be asking. Well, we can use these curves here as a path for an object to move around. I'll show you how. Select the cube, go and select the, um, the object constraints there, add a constraint, follow path. What path have we got? Well, this thing here is called target a curved circle. And as you can see now, it jumps it to the curved circle. Okay, that's all very good. Um, if I go now into this this curve, because it's a path, I can go through and say, okay, I want the entire this this path. I want it completed in 100 frames. Watch this. In 100 frames, it goes right back to the beginning again. I could change that to 250 if I wanted to. 250. Enter. And now, if I go through and drag it around, you'll see it takes 250 frames for my cube to make the circuit. Okay, evaluation time. This is, um, see how I'm 82 right now, and it's 82 there. What I can do is, that's how I can animate it. Okay, I'm going to make the whole thing last, let's say, um, 250 frames. I'm going to go through and bring this up to like 40 here. I'm going to go in here, press the zero. In other words, at this point right here on 40, I want it to have gone through zero of its 251 frames. I can now um, press I or right click and go insert keyframe. <coughs> You'll need to go see my um, animation tutorials if you have got no idea what I'm talking about. And then what I can do is I can drag it along up to here. Notice it hasn't moved at all because it's been told to go on to zero and hasn't been given any other instructions from there. At 120, I want it to have gone through, let's say, um, 251, because that's what the frames are there, of the thing. We're thinking, but how's that possible? You've only got like from, don't, I don't know. I could change that to 100 if I wanted to, and then let's just use that in there. But it's going to go through the 251 frames to get back to there. Okay, right click, insert frame. So now, Beyond that, nothing. Inside that, even though there's not 251 frames there, it's taking this total path of 251 pieces and it's starting the 251 pieces from there and it's bringing it through to there. Notice the little yellow signs? They show keyframes. I'm going to have to do a curves tutorial part three because there's another very cool thing that curves can do which is under this little thing here called bevel objects and, and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to pause this for now and come back to curves part three very shortly.